Hello again, Osceola Grace family. I'm glad you could join me for a little bit of encouragement in His Word today. And where we're going to get our encouragement is from Hebrews chapter 10, verses 36 through 39. Now, it wouldn't be a surprise to any of us that we're under a trying time. The entire world is uh, under a trying time as well. But as believers in Christ, how does God want us to behave during this time? How can we be the best example to our family, our friends, our co-workers that we believe truly that the Lord is in sovereign control and us worrying is not going to do us a bit of good, but also being angry during this time does not do us any good either. Well, the writer of Hebrews has a little bit to say about that. And the writer of Hebrews in chapter 10 verse 36 says, for you have need of endurance. Well, why do we have need of endurance? He goes on to say, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. Now, if we have to have endurance, that means that we're under duress of some kind. Now, this writer was referring to those who are being spiritually persecuted for who they followed, which was Christ Jesus. But he's also saying, after you've done the will of God, you may receive the promise. Well, what does that mean that we'll receive a pro What promise is he talking about? Well, let's read on, verse 37. For yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now, this is a reference to Christ uh, in the Old Testament when he was going to initially come as a baby in the manger. And then it had another fulfillment when he comes back in the rapture. Now, uh, last week, if you uh, were here for church or saw online, Pastor Greg was talking about from 1 Corinthians 15, the rapture of the church. And that's when Jesus Christ is going to come uh, in the air and he's going to take us who are believers, whether we're dead or whether we're living, back to be with himself in bodily form. So he gives us this promise. If we endure... He's going to come back. But there again, what does that really mean? Well, let's add a little bit more clarity. Verse 38, Now the just shall live by faith, but if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. So in other words, if we're in a time of trial and we're not living by faith, we're living by uh, what the government says or uh, what the World Health Organization says or just what somebody in our family or or uh, our friends say. If we're going by that and we're losing our hope because they're giving us this really bleak picture, the Lord doesn't like that because what we're doing is we're not believing Him and what He would have us to do, which is to live by faith. Well, you say, well, faith in what, Trent? Well, faith in He's in control, he, which means He's sovereign, and his sovereign plan, he's going to work everything out. That's Romans 8, 28. He works everything for the good. Now, everything might not be good we go through, but he's going to work it all for the good. But he wants us to live by faith. But then he gives this warning that says, but if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him in verse 38. And what the Lord is saying, if we start to grumble and we start to lose hope, and we start to be angry, and we start to be sinful in our words, in our actions, and especially in our attitudes towards Him and His Word, then that is not pleasing to Him, and we do not look like the overcomers that we need to be. That's who He's referring to. True overcomers of the Scripture are ones who are living by faith in what the Lord says, not only in His Word, but how the Holy Spirit testifies to us. Now listen to verse 39 in Hebrews 10 says this, But we are not of those who draw back to sin, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. So see that? When we believe in our salvation, that the Lord is everything He says He is, Christ is Lord, that one day when we die, we're going to meet Him again, whether it be in the rapture or whether it be in death, one of the two, we're going to see Him again. And everything He says is a true promise that he will never leave us nor forsake us, as he says in Matthew 28. And the writer of Hebrews is affirming that. But we don't draw back to sin, but we 
believe to the saving of soul. The very essence of our soul believes in the salvation that God has promised and the eternal security that we will realize all through eternity. I hope that these three verses bring a little hope to you and a little encouragement to live as the Lord would have us to live and to not grumble during these times and not, not lose hope because nothing blesses the Lord more than living in faith. And the scripture is very clear. Without faith, it's impossible to please the Lord. Thanks, church family, for watching this, and I hope this greatly encourages your heart. Have a great day in the Lord, folks.